What's up my fellow tree huggers? It's Finn with Treehouse Overland. Welcome to the chaos. What's up guys, thanks for watching. Today we're gonna install the Total Chaos Spindle Gusset Kit on my 2006 Sequoia. I thought for a second I could do this installation while the spindles were still on the truck, but no dice. I'm definitely gonna have to remove the spindles. My only concern are the bearings. I do not have a 50 ton press to get these bearings out. So I'm just gonna keep the heat low and cross my fingers. Come on and learn with me. You can see all the mistakes I made and then you won't have to make them. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, I'm gonna start by removing these three nuts that hold the top of the coilover in. If all you're doing is a spindle gusset, you don't need to do this, but I'm gonna be adding a spacer to the top of my shock while I'm in here. Next, we're gonna move on to the speed sensor wire. We got two bolts holding that guy on. And one more bolt holding on the bracket where the hard brake lines meet the soft brake lines. And then we're gonna support the brake line at the caliper and just bend it out of our way a little bit. Tie rod ends are next. Got two bolts holding on the brake caliper. And go ahead and remove the caliper and hang it from something. I used a cargo strap. You just don't want any tension on the brake line itself. Next, we're going to tackle the sway bar links. Uh, these are suspension max, aftermarket links. They're okay. They do what they're supposed to do, nothing special. But I'll put a link to a video in the description on removing the stock sway bar links. I've been working on some quick disconnect sway bar links for the front, and I think I finally got it, so stay tuned for that video. Now, if you run spacers and you've ever left them on for a while and then tried to take them off, you know the struggle is real. These things bond to the rotors like nobody's business. So I'm just pulling on the studs while I'll beat it with a hammer. Now we're gonna work on removing the spindle from this SPC upper. Again, if you have a stock upper control arm, I'll link a video in the description. Next, we're gonna remove the cap so we can get to the axle nut. The key to this is just taking your time and working your way evenly around that thing, little by little. I had to bring out the big guns for this job, guys. For under 100 bucks, this thing is a beast. Wheel speed sensor. And then the four lower ball joint bolts. Sometimes you gotta beat on the spindle pretty hard to get it loose from the lower ball joint. There it is, and that thing was heavy. Way heavier than I expected. And now I'm just gonna clean out all the gunk. Looks like I found an almond in there or something. And we're just gonna use some painter's tape, keep anything from getting into that bearing. And here I'm just working on a test fit. There's actually uh, quite a bit of footage of me doing it wrong. It, even looking at the picture, it was hard to line up the right way. And guys, now's a perfect time to run a Sharpie or a paint marker around the spindle gusset, just so you know where you have to grind. Uh, I didn't show that for some reason beat the rotor off, which I probably could have done while I was on the truck, but hey. The dust shield's got four bolts. Now you're not gonna be able to get the dust shield all the way off, but I was able to get it loose enough to bend out of the way and work around as I was grinding and welding. And 
here I just used some Gorilla Tape to get it up out of my way while I was grinding. I think I'm using a 60 grit flap disc on this. Yeah, we're just gonna do the best we can, get our grind on. Guys, I know that welding the spindle gusset on while the bearing is installed could cause some problems, but I also know it's a huge ordeal to get these bearings out. I think if I take it slow and keep the heat low, I should be fine. Only one way to find out. Feeling the bearing and it's not getting warm, so I'm gonna continue. This part kind of worried me. There's quite a substantial space down there that I knew I wouldn't be able to just fill with weld. So I end up getting a small sledge and just whacking it into submission. And uh, the flat part bent, but the angle sure didn't. Which is a good thing, because I don't want that thing bending out on the trail either. You just put your hand inside the bearing periodically to make sure it's not getting too hot. did like one to two inch sections and then I'd let it cool down and I'd move somewhere else and do another one inch section. Fully welded inside and out. And then I just hit it with some isopropyl alcohol and clean it up real good before I painted it. I just hit it with some paint. If you look closely, I made sure to tape off that insert that SPC provides. I don't want any paint getting in that or on the snap ring below it. It's also a good idea to put a piece of tape over any threaded holes and also the speed sensor hole. You want to block that off too. We're over halfway there. Just put it back together and we're done. Look, the wheel spacer just appeared out of nowhere. I got ahead of myself and I put it on before I even put the axle nut on. So I ended up having to take that off and redo it. You'll see it disappear in a few frames. Here we run into our first issue. This bracket used to live right there, but now the brake line is hitting the spindle gusset, so that's no good. So I found me a small bolt and a nut and I used the nut as a spacer to push that thing away from the spindle a little bit. I also bent it back with some vice grips and I snapped it. I snapped the horseshoe looking thing and that's actually what I googled. I googled brake line horseshoe thing and sure enough it's called a horseshoe clip. Here's a close up of what's going on. You can see the black nut acting as a spacer. It's clearing by about a quarter inch. She's moving around just fine. The next thing we run into is the speed sensor wire. It won't fit in its little holder anymore. And this bracket won't clip around the spindle because we added a gusset. I removed the bracket altogether. Then I just ran it down the spindle with a few zip ties and it's holding up fine. I got a lot of weight in my truck. I got like 130 pounds and skid plates alone, full steel bumper with a winch. My front spring started to sag a little bit, so I decided to just put a small spacer in there and see how that works. I got a pair off eBay for like 20 bucks. Also guys, I pushed the lower shock bolt in towards the CV, and then I rounded off the sharp edges on the nut, and I cut the bolt right down to be flush with the nut. 
and this way there's nothing sharp for the CV to catch on. If you take your shocks on and off often enough, this is an awesome hack. If your tassel nut ever just spins like that on you, just put some pressure on it with a jack. Should torque down fine. And yes, I know I need new tie rod ends. My dust shields got a little tweaked and they were rubbing. So I just had to take a hammer to it. That's pretty much it. Other than the sway bar, which I'm not gonna reattach until the other side's done looking good. Like I said, I eventually took care of that speed sensor wire. If anyone's curious, uh, this whole process took me an entire day from sun up to sundown. I barely got it back together for work the next day. I think I was using a headlamp towards the end. But you know how it goes. The first side goes slow as you learn and then the second side takes like half the time. I hope this helps somebody. Finn from Treehouse Overland signing off. Dirty finger peace sign. Dirty finger peace sign. <laughs> what is up with all this seaweed? Looks like the aliens from Independence Day when Will Smith was dragging them down the beach. Crazy. Where did it all come from? Where did all these aliens come it from? It's snake! <laughs> <laughs>